So from here, you can go here. Some people do this, that's fine too. But just make sure you don't pull your hand back like we talked about earlier. So you go straight, you try to kick minimum, you go straight down. So you're gonna do that like maybe 50 times just to get the idea. And another thing you don't wanna do. Hey guys, welcome to part three of the Kung Fu Report on a solo training series. Chris, can you come in? So we're gonna start with a different reference point today. Last week we were doing flow drills, right? And we did it off the double time. And Chris punched low. I think that's where we left off. Right? Today, we're gonna do it off the pop side. And Chris would be punching high in the head, and now I'm gonna get hit. Right? You gotta get hit here. So how do you stop that, right? It's just a reflex drill. First of all, like you try to look at the guy's chest, not his head. That way you have better reflexes, right? Because the slowest part of the body. When he comes in, it really depends where my hand get caught. If we go very slow, when, when Chris punched after the hot cell, my hand got caught here. So I moved it out of the way with my thumb by turning this way, which is a backward hands out. Right? From there, I hit and I grabbed his hand and I hit. Now, this is very important. When you're going sideways, it doesn't work very well because he's stronger than me and he's coming in this way with his body weight. So I have to turn my body to make it work. If you watch it again, The body turned this way for a second to get the punch out of the way. So I'm using my body and not the weight of my arm to do this. You gotta put your whole weight into it. And when I ended up here, I just started punching, right? Now, from what reading the comments, a lot of you are asking what to do if a guy took a swing. Because it seems like you can only defend against straight punches. That was one of the comments, right? But actually, there's a lot of things you can do if a guy took a swing. Off this drill, for example, he can start hitting. So slow motion, maybe you'll see it better this way. When Chris came in for the swing, I bridge him this way, right? This movement is straight from your second form in Chumkyu. It's called Chumkyu, folks, out, right? So when he comes in with this, I block him this way. Now, if I put my weight here, watch what happens. If I put it here, Chris pushes, he's bigger than me, right? I'm not gonna be able to hold his weight. But if I put my weight slightly over here, there's no bones here, it's empty. So if he swings, now, even though he's bigger, he's he doesn't matter, he can't move me because of the alignment of the force. So going back here so you can see from this angle, when Chris pops out and he swings, this is what's stopping him, right? But I'm driving the weight this way, not this way. That's very important. Then I hit him, and that offsets this part of his spine. So this arm goes this vector, this goes this vector, and that off balances him, right? So it's not a matter of strength, it's a matter of angles. Some of the things you can do off this, you can go, oh, sorry Chris, standard punching, right? Now, if the guy is like really tall, you can start going to the groin shot combinations. You can start doing the sotoplex combinations. For example, if I was really short, you can start, sorry Chris, sorry. You, you can start going low, right? Yeah. Um, and if you're too tall, let's say Chris is shorter than me. And the guy throws a swing, if you start punching, I actually have a disadvantage right now if he ducks and just shoots. And that happens a lot. People get taken down, right? Especially with Jin guys. So the follow-up to practice is really important based on your size. That's a concept that I notice people ignore a lot. Everyone seems to be doing the same punches. That's okay, then that's cool. But you want to keep in mind that not everyone's built the same, right? I'm not going to go into this here because for my online lesson students on my website, you know there's about 30 hours of footages on how to deal with different sizes and how to do follow-up. So if you're interested, just go to the student library on my website and then you can watch those footages. It's under that 13 core series. There's about 39 hours of footages on that. And that will teach you what to do if you're taller or shorter, fighting a guy that is bigger or taller. And you practice different follow-ups, right? So that's one thing you can do. Now, another thing you want to work on when, during this drill is, first of all, look at the guy's chest, like I was saying. That would increase your reflexes, right? And when a guy goes for that swing, step with your foot. But don't go this angle. If I go on that angle, and Chris pushes hard, I get out of balance. It's very important that you move your feet right in the center line. But even that doesn't work very well if I lag my hand behind. I have to move it together. Think of your elbow and your knee as chained together when you move. 
So now even go harder. Even if it goes really, really hard, it doesn't matter. Right? Go harder. It doesn't matter, right? And then you can start doing your hits. Okay? And now I'm going to give you some solo drills for that. Thanks, Chris. All right. So the first thing you want to work on is your hand position, right? So a lot of you have done the form and sulam tells like this. But for those who haven't done chamkyu, chamkyu folks, I was like this. It's right in the first section here. So if you haven't done the form, a good way to learn this, this is gonna feel really weird at first, is you go like this. You see where my elbow is? It's not flaring out, it's not coming in, it's like this. There's different ways to do this, but this is the easiest way to learn at first. Just hold this position while you're watching TV or something for about five minutes. I know it would feel silly, but as you hold this position, you will start to notice tension here, right in here, and for some people even here, and also in this muscle here. Now, as you hold that and you feel the tension, let's say if I feel the tension here, what I want to do is put my finger here and relax it. Now I feel tension here, I put my finger there and I learn to relax it. But as I relax it, I'm not allowed to move the frame, the skeleton. So one more time, so I hold, I hold a position here, I feel tension here, I put my finger here and I release it. Just relax it. Then I feel tension here. As I relax it, my elbow moves, so it's wrong. So I gotta make sure I do it right. One way you can do that is by looking in the mirror, right? And as I relax this muscle, relax this muscle, relax this muscle, relax this muscle, relax that muscle. Now basically what I taught my body is to just use the skeleton system and just use enough muscle to hold a frame. What that means is when I'm moving, I'm only stepping on the gas, not the brakes, right? For those that's interested in this, Qigong's really um, like post-training standing or even very slow salim tao. It's very, very good for that. And once again, for those that are on my website, just go to the student library and there's a lot of videos on just, just those two things, right? That's the first thing you can do. Second thing, we were talking about stepping earlier. Try to maybe get a magic marker or something or maybe get a pencil or a cup and then just put it on your center line. Put an object like a coffee cup right on your center line, right? Now, when you're stepping, make sure your toe is going directly towards that coffee cup. So you're not going this way, you're not going this way. You're generally going forward. At first, that's gonna feel really easy, right? But as you do this, make it a little bit more fussy. Think about your big toe matching the coffee cup, right? When you're moving. Now, that's gonna take a few minutes for you to get that, right? Then see if you can time it with that frame that we were talking about earlier. I'm just gonna step forward like this. Step forward like this. Once you can do that, you're gonna add your punch to it, right? That's one, two, three. That's a lot of work. So work on that and then uh, message me and Chris and uh, let me know if you get any questions, right? Uh, thank you for watching this short demo. For those that are interested in developing this stuff farther, like actually learning how to do this, um, Chris has put together a training program on our website recently. You can go check it out and uh, hope to see you there.